Hey guys, this is your boy Ben Claremont from Life in 360, and today I'm going to be comparing side by side the Theta S, the Insta360, and the LG360 cam. So here I've lined them up on the ground. What do you think? I think the differences are pretty big actually. In this experiment, I've left all three cameras in auto exposure mode, so they're all on a level playing field. Because these are consumer 360 cameras, more often than not, people are going to leave them in auto exposure mode. So to start off with, here are the resolutions. The Nano has the highest, the LG the second highest, the Theta is the lowest resolution of the three. And here I've enhanced the footage through color correction to look as good as they all can possibly look. I tried to reduce the highlights and increase the shadows in all three and just get them looking as colorful and nice as possible. I'm really noticing the sharpness of the grass on the Insta360 Nano. That looks fantastic. Uh, another thing worth noting is the color from the Theta S. It's looking really good. The greens look green, the blues look blue. The LG, well, it's not a whole lot of good stuff I can say other than the resolution's pretty decent in the places that it's properly stitched. Okay, so now I've got all three of them side by side as I walk down the street. And let's see how much they shake or don't shake. So here's the Nano, which is the highest resolution camera. Uh, that's looking pretty good. That's definitely usable. If you've got a steady hand, that's great. Looks good. Okay, so the LG360 cam is next, and that is looking shaky as. This is not the best camera for moving when you're shooting video. You want to keep this one on a tripod. Does not look good. Doesn't, doesn't stabilize very well. And finally, we have the Theta S, which has inbuilt stabilization. This is the best of the three. If you're on the go and you want to do a walking shot, this is going to have the smoothest effect later on. However, don't forget, if you're uploading your videos to Facebook, it's going to automatically stabilize them for you. So this isn't as big of an issue. If it's on YouTube, however, it'll still be shaky. Right, here is the Insta360 Nano in low light. Sun has almost gone down, it's just beneath the horizon. Uh, it's not completely pitch black at all, um, but what, from what I can see on the screen, it's capturing the sky slightly, slightly brighter than I'm actually seeing it. How much noise it has? I don't know yet, I'll have to zoom in later and have a look. But this is looking pretty darn good, I reckon. Okay, here is the LG360 cam in low light. Uh, wonder how it performs. It's got a pretty fast lens, or lenses. Uh, it's faster than the Ricoh, so my guess is it's picking up this low light pretty well. I'm sure the stitch line is going to be more noticeable than usual, but we'll have to wait and see. And finally, here's the Theta S in low light. Theta is my baby, it's not exactly known for video, but I love it for photo. Uh, low light isn't an issue when you can do long exposures, you obviously can't do that with video. So let's just see how this video turns out. Now I've put them in extreme low light. So now it's only just the light of that lamp there in my room. And the LG is grainy as hell. That's the first thing that caught my eye. Uh, not good in low light. Um, the Nano is second grainiest, or second best, whichever way you want to look at it. And the Theta is looking fantastic. Really good. Um, what really stands out to me here is the dynamic range of the Theta. The fact that you can see the lamp and it's not overexposed, whereas it is in the other two. It has the best dynamic range of the three and seems to be performing the best in low light. So what did you guys think of that comparison? I think they're three really good cameras, and to be perfectly honest, any 360 camera is better than no 360 camera. So definitely consider one of them if you haven't already. So here's what I think after looking at that footage. The LG is obviously the cheapest camera, and you get what you pay for. It's a $99 camera, so you can't be expecting the world's best 360 camera. It does a damn good job, the resolution's good, stitching's not good, not good in low light. 
Um, however, it does have spatial audio. It's not perfect yet, but it's the only one of the three cameras that has spatial audio. That's something that's exciting. It means whenever you walk around it, it'll capture exactly where your audio is. To me, that's the only redeeming quality about the LG. It has good resolution and good sound. For everything else, the other two cameras beat it. The Insta360 Nano, it has the highest quality video resolution, so that's a really big factor. Because if you're looking for a camera specifically for video, you want as much resolution as possible. So for resolution, um, it's a no-brainer that the Nano wins of the three, and overall, it captures images very well, captures video very well, and is a really good investment. It's cheaper than the Theta, so if you want a really good 360 video camera, go for the Insta360 Nano. It's fantastic, and now they have the Insta360 Air as well. Finally, we have the Ricoh Theta S, which was the very first camera of the three that came out almost two years ago now. Um, yes, the resolution is the lowest of the three, however, what I noticed looking over that footage is that it has the best dynamic range, so it captures colors the best. Uh, it captures the, the full 360 with the most amount of accuracy. You don't have to worry about your highlights being blown out or your shadows being too dark that you can't see anything. That's a huge factor. For me, it's one of the biggest factors is dynamic range. It doesn't get talked about enough, but you can have all the resolution in the world but if you can't actually see the sky, if it's completely blown out like it is on the LG, it's not really usable. So dynamic range is very important. I always know I'm going to get the maximum amount of detail in my 360 videos when I shoot with the Theta. Yes, I know the resolution's low, but sometimes I'm will willing to forgive it because it produces damn good colors and a very accurate um, color spectrum. So for me, the Theta wins for dynamic range. So look, all three cameras do a damn good job for photo and video, so go based on your price range. Uh, if you can afford a bit more, um, go for the Theta or the, the Insta360 Nano. Um, the Insta360 Pro is coming out as well, which I'm very excited about. It's gonna be an 8K 360 video camera, so keep an eye out for that. Personally, I like to have a few cameras on me at all times, just based on the situation. If I wanna shoot video, or choose a more dedicated video camera to shoot 360. If it's just photo, I'll more than likely go with the Theta or the Insta360 Nano. So really, the decision's up to you. They're all good choices. Until next time, keep living your life in 360. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. And I've also got an ebook out. If you like Tiny Planet photography, you might want to check it out. It'll teach you how to shoot really good Tiny Planet photos. All right, guys, until next time, I'll speak to you soon.